Hello, I'm Mary Copeland. Welcome to Compass and Clock, The Road Ahead. Through a series of guests, we are going to help navigate you on your own road ahead as you age. We will help you prepare for your journey and that of your aging parents. Because let's face it, who wants to be blindsided and find themselves in a crisis mode simply because they just didn't have access to information? At Compass and Clock, we will help guide you into your best future and we'll also make you aware of programs that you might not have known about otherwise. Which brings me to our guest today, Renee. Um, I'll tell you a little bit here. Um, every third Tuesday of the month, I attend a meeting called the Kitsap Provider Breakfast, and there's usually a speaker at that meeting. Well, the meeting was just two days ago, and Renee was our speaker, and she talked about this amazing program called Honor Flight and everybody that was there in attendance was just overwhelmed with this program and i felt compelled that at the end of the meeting i needed to go introduce myself to renee <laughs> and take a chance and say is your calendar free on thursday mm -hmm. and lucky for me it was and therefore i invited renee to be on the road ahead so she can share with you what she shared with all of us so renee Peavy is a native of um, our very military area, Bremerton. Her father was with the Navy for 20 years and he retired as a captain. Renee went to college and while in college she um, worked in the medical field and then she dedicated 30 years to the FAA as an air traffic controller. Somehow Renee got involved <laughs> with Honor Flight and so she's here to tell us about that today. So to kick this off, Renee, why don't you, um, number one, thank you for joining us. I'm so glad that you had time in your calendar. And just give us an overview. What is Honor Flight? Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me here and letting me spread the word about the Honor Flight program. Honor Flight, the World War II Memorial off opened in 2004. And there was a gentleman by the name of Earl Morse, who was a physician's assistant that lived up in Maine that was seeing World War II vets. And as they came in, he would inquire, have you been to your World War II memorial? It, no. And he'd come back the next year. Oh. Have you been to World War II memorial? No. Well, Earl was a member of a flying club, so he got a few of his buddies together. And in 2005, flew 12 World War II vets back to Washington, D.C. to see the World War II memorial. And out of that, Wonderful. the Honor Flight Network was born. To date, they've brought, we've brought over 220,000 veterans back to Washington, D.C. to see the memorials built in their honor. Puget Sound Honor Flight started back in 2013. There's 130 hubs across the United States. So um, it started in Maine mm -hmm. with the first hub. Yep. There's now over 130. Yes. Puget Sound Honor Flight's hub started in 2013. Where do you fit into all of this? Well, my husband retired in 2009. He was also an air traffic controller, and he was driving me nuts, so we needed to get him out of the house. He loves the World War II vets. And I had a friend that I went to high school with that I saw on Facebook, of all places. She was a nurse, and she was in Chicago. And she was hanging out with World War II vets on the weekend in Washington, D.C. So I reached out to her and said, hey, Kathy, that looks wonderful. What are you doing? She goes, I'm with Chicago Honor Flight. I travel with veterans, and we go back, and we show the memorials to them. It's all free, and it's just a wonderful program. I'm like, where do we sign up? So she hooked me up with, at the time, in 2009, our sister hub, Eastern Washington, Inland okay. Northwest Honor Flight, uh, was up and running. So I reached out to uh, Denny, and I reached out to Tony, and I said, hey, we'd love to be guardians and get our veterans back and escort veterans back to D.C. And they said, you know what, Renee, we're good with guardians. We need you to start a hub. We have 250 Western Washington applications in our, in our office here that yeah. don't have a home. So you need to start a hub. And so... <laughs> I wow. talked with them for about an hour and a half on the phone about logistics. We went over there the next weekend, my husband and I, and watched a screening of a movie they had called Honor Flight the Movie, which if you haven't seen it, you should go out and watch it. But after that, we were hooked. And so we met with them the next day, talked a little bit more about logistics. We went home with the 250 applications and set about starting a hub. Nothing like jumping right in. Yeah, right? yeah. So... Um, how does a veteran um, 
qualify to um, do an honor flight. So as long as you've worn the uniform of the U.S. military, you qualify. We take veterans based on conflict, years of service more or less, mm -hmm. and then by postmark date. So of course our World War II guys will be to the front and gals, and then our Korean vets. Because of age. Because of age, and then our Vietnam vets, and all the, the Cold War, all the little spaces in between. Um, we just categorize them all in mostly, mostly by age. Uh, is the way it mostly works, but within conflict. So currently we've gotten through our World War II guys and our Korean vets, um, but we s continually get applications in. So we right, are somebody always- Somebody discovers you, so yes, to speak. Yes, and they rise, so the, the, they'll rise to the top. And then we um, have our, a large waiting list of Vietnam veterans too. So we just factor that in and we bring 220 vets a year. We make four trips a year. Of those four trips, uh, we take about, there's 112 travelers and 60 of them are veterans and the rest are support staff like guardians and medical people, photographers, logistics people. So, so um, 112 seats on the plane, mm -hmm. only 60 are vets. Mm -hmm. What does this cost? How does somebody um, get to be on the flight? How so does that's that all a, work? That's a great question. It costs us it costs us approximately $1,000 to send a veteran back to Washington, D.C. We pay for the veteran. It's 100% covered. That includes, you got to get yourself to and from the airport. It includes airfare, bus, food, hotel, everything. And the veterans are free. And the guardians, you're allowed up to one non-spouse family guardian from the next generation. Son, daughter, grandson, granddaughter, even a family friend that's capable of helping load luggage and wheelchairs because we bring 40 wheelchairs on the fly. This is very much a utility trip for the Guardian. They may even be called upon to care for an additional veteran based on ambulatory status. And the Guardian pays the fee, which is $1,000. Okay. That doesn't, you don't have to provide a Guardian. A veteran doesn't have to provide a Guardian. We don't want that to be a reason why they can't make the trip. Okay. Um, so they'll, they'll, we have a list of you guardians. Have an arsenal that, of guardians. Yep, an okay. arsenal is a great word. Yeah, of guardians that we provide, um, and then the guardian fee follows the guardian. So whoever is the guardian pay, is responsible for the fee. Now, if I remember from the other day, two days ago, remember mm -hmm. when she did this presentation, you said something about the actual veteran themselves. They could be in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. which is fine because somebody can help them get around, but some of their activities, their daily living, their ADLs, one specifically, they need to be able to use the restroom themselves. Is yeah. that correct? I mean, not totally themselves, but imagine a veteran on an airplane and they, mm -hmm. if they need to go to the bathroom, they're gonna need to be able to do that kind of thing. Gotcha. The middle of the night, you know, they're, they're, even though they, they'll be rooming with their guardian, you know, there needs to be some, some very basic things that, you know, for the comfort of the veteran and our guardians aren't all medically you know, trained. trained to be able to do that. So a lot of times there's family members, about I'd say two thirds, the, two thirds of the guardians we bring on each trip are family members and then we fill in about another third with non-family guardians. Okay, and if I understood correctly the other day also, if somebody um, is a guardian mm -hmm. that isn't from your arsenal of guardians, right. they pay the thousand yep. dollars and Puget Sound Honor Flight is a nonprofit, yep. so that thousand dollars is a hundred percent tax write-off. We provide the documentation. We could not make these flights without the guardians. They are a critical part. So what will happen is the guardian will make a thousand dollar donation to Puget Sound Honor Flight in exchange for this is what we bring them on the, along on the trip because they're they're critical. They're crucial. We couldn't, as you know, we bring sixty of the hundred and twelve are veterans, and the rest are support staff, which are much needed. So, but that thousand dollars really doesn't cover everything. So, do you fundraise? Can people donate on your website? How does that work? Yes. Where does the rest of the funds so come from? So we get no federal funds. We get donations from good-hearted VFWs and American Legions and individuals, and we don't allow the veterans to contribute before the flight. But oftentimes after a flight, they'll they'll send some they'll send some money in. We have partnered with. Um, car dealers, um, some beverage companies, some car wash companies. We just try to foster relationships like that and they're all very passionate, good-hearted people that love our veterans and want to do whatever they can do to 
to help out the cause. So we've been very fortunate and thank our lucky stars every day that our, our funding is, has been good. So, but it, we it, can it, always use more. Of <laughs> course, which of course you can go to their website, yeah. which would be Puget Sound honorflight.org and there is a spot on their website where you can donate. Um, what I would ask at this point is, um, are there any parting words that you want to share with the viewers? Um, anything you want to tell us that we haven't covered? Yeah, well, a couple things. First of all, you know, America's built these memorials for them to be visited and for us to honor our veterans. And it's our job at Puget Sound Honor Flight, as well as all the rest of the honor flights across the un United States, to get them back there to see these memorials that were built in their honor. They um. are, we're, we're free today because of the sacrifices that they made back then. And if you know a deserving veteran, please get them signed up, especially our older guys. Time is of the essence, and they hide in every nook and cranny around. And thanks to programs like this that reach out to and increase awareness for programs like this, we're able to find find them. So thank you very much for the opportunity today, Mary. It's been wonderful. Renee, I just have to say thank you so much for making time in your calendar today for me, especially since I asked you at the last minute to come here, educate myself and all our viewers um, about the Honor Flight program across the country, the 130 plus hubs, the one that we have in our own backyard here, Puget Sound Honor Flight. Um, I would encourage all of you to um, reach out to your neighbors, people that you work with, friends and family. If any of you know a veteran, please connect them with Puget Sound Honor Flight, or don't forget, there's over 130 hubs in the country, so if they're in Chicago, Arizona, any place else, we'll help you connect to the right hub. Thank you again, Renee, for being here today and sharing all the information, and thank you all for spending some time with us today at The Road Ahead. I look forward to bringing you some more information in the next guest appearance. Have a great day.